In this lesson, we want to finish talking about Gaussian elimination and also the Gauss-Jordan elimination. All right, so over the course of the last two lessons, we learned about the Gaussian elimination and the Gauss-Jordan elimination. And we saw that we could use these two methods to kind of solve a linear system. We looked at two variables and then also one with three variables. And so now what we're gonna do is just take the next step and look at a linear system with four variables. This is very tedious, I'll just tell you that before we start, but I'm gonna do some things that just kind of speed us up so I'm going to just take this guy real quick and set up our matrix so we can just get going right away. So we know we want to take the numerical information from each equation here. And you might notice that we've labeled our variables a little bit different. In your book, if you're taking pre-calculus or college algebra, you might see X, Y, Z, and then W. Okay, so W will be first because it's in alphabetical order. But I didn't do that because a lot of times you'll also see this with the notation of x sub 1 through x sub 4. So whatever you're comfortable with is fine. If you don't like this, you can replace x sub 1 with w, x sub 2 with x, x sub 3 with y, and x sub 4 with z. Okay, so I'm just going to follow the format of x sub 1 coming first, then x sub 2, then x sub 3, then x sub 4. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. All right, so we're going to start out with this first equation. We'll have a 3, a negative 2, a 5 and then a negative 1 and a negative 8. Then in the second equation, I'm going to have a negative 1, a 3, a negative 1, a 4, and then a 9. Then in the third equation, I'm going to have a negative 2, a negative 1, a 4, a 9, and a negative 9. Let me make that a little better. And let me scroll down a little bit. Then in this last equation, I want you to notice that you don't have an x sub 2. Whenever you're missing a variable, you want to write a 0 as the coefficient for that variable to act as a placeholder. So I'm going to put a 1, and then again, for my x sub 2, I'm putting a 0 as the coefficient. Then for x sub 3, I put a 3, then my 2, then my negative 2, okay? So this guy is now set up for us, and we are ready to go. So let me copy this real quick. Now, the quickest way to solve this, if you only know kind of Gaussian elimination or Gauss-Jordan elimination, if you just get this, and this is where you are in your chapter, I would suggest just doing the Gaussian elimination putting this matrix in row echelon form, meaning I'm just going to get ones down the diagonal and zeros below. It's going to be really quick to do that and then kind of back substitute to get your answer. If you go through to reduced row echelon form, again, that's from the Gauss-Jordan elimination, it does take a little bit longer. That is what we're going to do today just to get a lot of practice on these elementary row operations because I feel like you do need it. It's just something that comes up, it goes away, and then later on, if you have to go back to it, it's something if you didn't practice enough, you kind of forget it, and then you might struggle with it again. All right, so the very first thing I want to do is I want to get a 1 as this top position here, and then I want to work below and get zeros, okay? Every time I go to the right to a new column, I want to get my 1 first and then my zeros. So what I'm going to do... I could multiply this first row, which I'd label as row 1. Okay, let me label all these real quick. I could multiply row 1 by 1 third, but there's an easier solution. Remember, for the elementary row operations, I can swap two rows. So I can say row 1 is going to swap with row 4 because I already have a 1 there. And if I swap those rows, this guy would come up here. Okay, so let me just write this real quick. I have 1, 0, 3, 2, and negative 2. I'll just erase this from here. I'll just copy this here. 3, negative 2, 5, negative 1, and negative 8. And then I'll just copy this right here. So 1, 0, 3, 2, and negative 2. Okay, so now that I have my 1 in this position here, these ones going down are pretty easy to get. And I'm going to do multiple ones at once. Okay, we're ready to kind of speed up this process. So we know that if we want this to be a 0... I've got to add the opposite of that number to it, okay? So in this case, I've got to add a 1. In this case, I've got to add a 2. And in this case, I've got to add a negative 3. Well, this 1 is really convenient because whatever I multiply by 1, it's just itself. So what I'm going to do in each case is I'm going to multiply row 1 by whatever I need to add to this to make it a 0. And then I'm going to add it to that row. And then that's what I'm going to replace the row with, okay? So for the first one, I'm going to say that I'm going to have 1 times row 1 plus row 2. This is what I'm going to replace row 2 with, okay? And when you multiply something by 1, it's just itself. So really, you could just say row 1 plus row 2 if you want. Then for the next one, I'm going to end up saying that I'm going to have 2 
times rho 1. Okay, so the opposite of negative 2 is 2. So 2 times rho 1 plus rho 3. That's what I'm going to replace rho 3 with. And then for this last one here, I'm going to have negative 3, okay, because negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So negative 3 times rho 1 plus my rho 4 is what I'm going to replace rho 4 with. Okay, so let's go through and crank this out real quick. So I know for this one, I'm just adding row one and row two. That's what I'm replacing row two with. So one plus negative one is zero. Zero plus three is three. Three plus negative one is two. Two plus four is six. And negative two plus nine is seven. So this one is done. Then for this one, two times row one plus row three. That's what I'm going to replace row three with. So 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus negative 2 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0, 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1. Then 2 times 3 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 9 is 13. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, negative 4 plus negative 9 is negative 13. All right, so this one is done, so let's do this one. So we have negative 3 times row 1 plus row 4. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 3 is 0. We know that this would be still negative 2. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus 5 is negative 4. And then negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus negative 1 is negative 7. Then lastly, we have negative 3 times negative 2, which is going to be positive 6. And then positive 6 plus negative 8 is negative 2. All right, so that part's done. I have a 1 here and zeros below. Now I want to move to my next column, and I want to get a 1 here. Okay, I already have a zero above, so I'm going to get that one first, and then I'm going to get the zeros below. Okay, so the easiest way to get a one in this position here, I can multiply any row by a non-zero real number. So I'm just going to multiply this whole row, row two, by the reciprocal of three, because three times a third would give me one. Okay, so I'm going to multiply one third times row two. That's what I'm going to replace row two with. So this would be one. This would be two thirds. This would be six thirds, which is two. And this would be seven thirds. Okay, so that's pretty quick. And now I want to get a zero here, and I want to get a zero here. So I know the additive inverse of negative one is one. So again, I could multiply one times row two and add that to row three. That's what I could replace row three with if I want this to be a zero. And again, if I'm multiplying by one, it's just itself, so you can just erase that. Then for this one, the additive inverse of negative 2 is 2. So I want to multiply 2 times row 2 and then add that to row 4. That's going to give me my new row 4, okay? So for this guy right here, I'm just going to add row 2 and row 3, and that's going to replace row 3. So 1 plus negative 1 is 0. Then you would have 2 thirds plus 10. Well, I know I could write this as over. I could multiply this by 3 over 3, so this would be... 30 thirds, and 30 plus 2 is 32, so this would be 32 thirds. So this would be 32 thirds. Then I'd have 2 plus 13, which is 15. And then lastly, I would have 7 thirds plus negative 13. Multiply this by 3 over 3, you would get 39 there over 3, so negative 39 thirds. So negative 39 plus 7 would be negative 32. So this would be negative 32 thirds. Okay, so let's erase this and this. This one's done. So now let me work on this row here. Again, I want that to be a 0. So I'm going to multiply 2 times row 2, add the result to row 4. That's what I'm going to replace row 4 with. So we know this is going to be a 0. 2 thirds times 2 is 4 thirds. Then plus negative 4. Multiply this by 3 over 3, you get negative 12 thirds. 4 plus negative 12 is negative 8, so this is going to be negative 8 thirds. Okay, then the next one is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4. 4 plus negative 7 is negative 3. Then the last one's 2 times 7 thirds, which is 14 thirds. Then plus negative 2, which I'll write as negative 6 over 3. So 14 minus 6 is going to be 8, so this would be 8 thirds. So I'll put this as 8 thirds. Okay, so let me erase this. So far, so good. So now, I want a 1 here to get started, okay? These two columns to the left are done. I want this to be a 1, so you already know the deal. I'm going to multiply row 3 by 3 over 32. 
And this gets easier as we move on because I don't have to worry about this stuff over here. This is zero and this is zero. So multiplying that by the reciprocal doesn't do anything, right? It's still zero. This is going to be one. We already know that. So really the only calculation I have to do is 15 times three over 32, which is going to be 45 over 32. And then you would have your negative 32 over three times three over 32. This cancels and this cancels, you get negative one. So this is negative one here. Okay, so let's erase this. Okay, so let's think about getting a zero here, here, and here. Okay, so three different things we wanna do. Again, in each case, because I've got a one there, think about what the additive inverse is of what you're trying to make into a zero. Multiply that by that row with the one in it and then add that to the current row that you're trying to make that into a zero. I know I said a lot there, but basically, if you think about this, for row one, I'm trying to make this three into a zero. So I'm going to multiply row three by negative three, the additive inverse of that, add the result to row one. Okay, so that's going to take care of that. That's what I'm going to replace row one with. Same concept as we move on. So for row two, I'm going to multiply negative two thirds, which is the additive inverse of two thirds, times row three, okay, that one in row three, plus row two, that's what I'm gonna replace row two with. And then lastly, for row four, I'm gonna take positive eight thirds, multiply it by row three, add the result to row four, that's what I'm gonna replace row four with. All right, so let's do these one at a time. So let's start with this kind of row one here. So I want negative three times this row three, okay? I'm gonna add the result to row one. Now, because these two guys here are zeros, I don't need to worry about it. Zero times anything is zero. Adding zero to something doesn't change it. I know this would be zero. I don't even need to worry about that. I just have to do the calculation for these two. So I would start here with this kind of 45 over 32, and I would multiply it by this negative three, okay, by this negative three, and I would add to this, this value of two. Okay, so that's one of them that I have to do. Then the other one would be negative one. So negative one times negative three, and then I'm gonna add to that negative two. So let's kind of slide down here and do this and we'll come back up. So 45 times negative three is negative 135, and this will be over 32. Then plus for two to get a common denominator, I would write it as 64 over 32. So if I sum these, negative 135 plus 64 is going to be negative 71. So this would be negative 71 over 32. Okay, so for this one, negative one times negative three is three, right, positive three. And positive three plus negative two is positive one. So I'm gonna have negative 71 over 32 and I'm gonna have positive one. So let's erase this. So we'll put this as negative 71 over 32. Let me make that better. So negative 71 over 32. And then again, this was positive one. Okay, so now I can erase this, this part's done. Let me kind of slide this up. So now let's work on this one. So I know that this right here, again, I'm multiplying negative two thirds times row three. So this and this are not affected. This is going to be a zero. This right here, I would have negative two thirds times, so negative two thirds times 45 over 32. And then the result of that would be added to two. So let's figure out what this is. So this cancels with this and gives me a 16 down here. This cancels with this and gives me a 15 here. So this is negative 15 over 16. So negative 15 over 16. To get a common denominator going, I'm gonna say this is 32 over 16. And then 32 minus 15 is 17. So this would be 17 over 16. So that's what I'm gonna put right here. It's going to be again, 17 over 16. All right, and then one more to do. So I'm gonna multiply negative two thirds times negative one. So negative two thirds times negative one, which would just be two thirds. And then I'm gonna add the result to this seven thirds here, okay? So two plus seven is nine. So this would be nine over three, which is three. So I'm gonna replace this with a three. Okay, so let's erase this one. And now we're just gonna work on this one. So I've got eight thirds times row three plus row four. So if I go through again, this one and this one, it's not gonna change these. This guy's gonna turn into a zero. So what I wanna do is eight thirds times 45 over 32. So this cancels with this and gives me a four. This cancels with this and gives me a 15. So you have 15 fourths plus negative three. 
So 15 fourths, you can go ahead and just say minus three. Three is 12 over four. 15 minus 12 is three, so this is just three fourths. Three fourths. All right, then we wanna do eight thirds times negative one, which is just negative eight thirds. And then we wanna go plus eight thirds, which is obviously gonna give us zero. So this will be zero here. All right, so not much left. So we wanna get a one here now. And to do that, I can just multiply row four by four thirds. Obviously you can see that X sub four is going to be zero, right? Because when I multiply this by four thirds, this by four thirds, this by four thirds, and this by four thirds, it's all gonna stay zero. This is gonna change into a one, right? So four thirds times row four is what I'm gonna replace row four with. So this will just be one, okay? All right, now I want a zero here, here, and here. So to get the zero here, I'm gonna multiply row four by negative 45 over 32, add the result to row three. Again, that's what I'm gonna replace row three with. And then I'm gonna multiply negative 17 over 16 times row four, add the result to row two. That's what I'm gonna replace row two with. And then lastly, I'm gonna multiply 71 over 32 times row four, add the result to row one, that's what I'm gonna replace row one with. Now, before I do anything, you might wanna notice that this is a zero, this is a zero, this is a zero, and this is a zero. So in every case, whatever this number is, it doesn't matter, when it multiplies these guys by zero and I add it to whatever row it is, it doesn't change. So none of these entries are gonna change anywhere except for here, here, and here, and in every case, I'm adding exactly what I need to make them into a zero. So I can just go ahead and put zero, 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 and say so we have our solution. So remember, it's the coefficients for x sub one, then x sub two, then x sub three, then x sub four. So for x sub one, it's going to be one. For x sub two, it's going to be three. For x sub three, it's going to be negative one. And for x sub four, it's going to be zero. So again, in this particular case, we just so happen to get x sub one through x sub four. But if you had w, x, y, and z, remember, the leftmost column would be w, then x, then y, then z. It goes in alphabetical order. With subscripts, you go one, two, three, and four. You go in numerical order. 